And good morning, Kurt Berglund with you again. Uh, and I'm walking people through today uh, a game called Baseball Classics, one that I've played uh, about 200, 250 games of. Um, and in um, on both the uh, standard and advanced levels of the game uh, called Premium. And I'm trying to show uh, how the game is played and kind of what you get and give you some more information about the game so that maybe you can make a decision about uh, whether you want to buy it, number one, and number two, if you do buy it, uh, try and help you with gameplay a little bit. So I'm going to move the camera here. We're going to go over some elements of gameplay now so that hopefully you can see kind of how the game unfolds. Um, I said in the first video that basic, intermediate, and and advanced are the three levels of rules that you get, but there's two card levels, and that's premium uh, for the lefty-righty splits, and standard if you just want a single column result without lefty-righty splits, similar to APA Basic or Stratomatic Basic. So let's look at how gameplay works. Um, I'm going to move the camera, hopefully that won't make you too nauseous, and look at uh, strategy here first of all so that you get a sense of how that works. If you are at bat and you decide that you want to decide what your strategy options are, um, you would look at the gameplay chart. And the first thing you could do is to look at, suppose that Bill Buckner was up at bat, uh, you see that he's rated in near the upper left corner of the card for things like bunting, stealing, and base running. Um, so if you had a runner on base and you wanted Bill Buckner to bunt or you were thinking about having him bunt, you can see that in the bunting uh, chart that is just to the right of his card, there are four different triangles near the top of that chart, green, yellow, blue, and red. Uh, they go from the best bunting ability being green to the worst bunting ability being red. So if you go back to Buckner's card and you see that he's a green rated bunter, you know that uh, you'd look down that column and you would just roll the three dice for the bunting outcome. And then you would look down on the bunt chart below at the very bottom of the screen here and you would see what those ratings turned into, the different color codes and symbols, and that would help you get your outcome. So you would not look at Buckner's card except to get the green bunting rating, and then you'd roll the three D6s, and you'd look there for uh, his outcome. Hope that's clear. Now, if, you, if Buckner was on base, and you decided, well, maybe he should steal. Um, you would look at his stealing rating, uh, which in this case is blue, and so it would be the second column from the right. You'd roll the three D6s and look down that column to see what um, the outcome of that would be. There's a stealing chart at the bottom of my screen right here and the stealing chart uh, interprets what each of the colors and symbols on that chart mean, okay? Third, sorry about the moving of the camera. Third is base running. So if you wanna look at Buckner's speed, uh, that is rated blue. And so uh, for 1986, you'd look down that column if you want him to take or attempt to take an extra base and if I zoom out here a little bit, you'll see uh, what the run chart looks like at the bottom of the screen and what those symbols all look like uh, and are interpreted for you. All right. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the play action simulator, but it is the right part of this chart. Um, it would be a preliminary role for you before each batter. So the play action simulator is an advanced rule. You can see on the play action simulator chart what the different outcomes of the play action simulator could be. And they uh, indicate for you kind of what 
Unique plays, including umpire arguments, ejections, rainouts, pass balls, pickoffs, uh, injuries, hit by pitch, and uh, all sorts of other stuff, catcher's interference, could be for under those readings. If you're playing the advanced game, then the, the, this part of the advanced game, then the play action simulator would be something that you might um, end up deciding to use. And sometimes I use it as well. All right, so let's go back for a minute to gameplay. If we have, um, and uh, I'm just going to kind of walk you through what that might look like. So I'm gonna move my cards here over and give you an idea of what gameplay would look like. There's two ways of doing defense in baseball classics. The first way is to do team defense. The second way, more advanced way, is to do individual fielding. So let's look back at the cards that we looked at in the last video, and maybe we'll look at Reggie Jackson's card as an example. Each player is given position or positions, plural, uh, uh, to play in baseball classics. For Reggie Jackson, it's a right field rating because that's what he played in 1974 exclusively for the Oakland A's. He's given the color rating of a red triangle, which is the worst defense that you can possibly have. And we're gonna come back to that uh, in a minute. But suppose that Reggie is facing Frank Viola. I'm gonna roll the dice here so that you can see what a potential outcome might look like for Reggie. And let's suppose that this was it. We roll a zero 11. Well, we learned in the last video that a zero means that it's read off the pitcher's card. A zero on the binary die means that it's read off the pitcher's card. So we go to Viola and look at the 11. Now, uh, we're, if we do either advanced or standard, we go down to, we roll, we add the three uh, D6s and we get an outcome of an 11. That is a pop-out, P-O, versus lefties, versus righties, or even in the standard, it's still a pop-out. And you say, okay, well, are we done? No, we're not done. Uh, we think we're done, but we're not, we don't know that for sure. Because whether we're playing advanced or intermediate defense, uh, we need to do an error check. So we've done the first roll, which is to determine what the outcome is on the card. But then we have to go and do the error check. Now we know that the outcome is a pop-out. So if we're playing the individual defense, we go to the pop-out chart on the uh, grid here. And um, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so that you can see that we roll a second time but it's just the three D6s. So I'm gonna do that. And we rolled a three plus six plus three is a 12. So we go back to the pop-out chart and we look down the left column and we got a 12. Now, uh, Reggie Jackson is a left-handed batter. So what we would do is to look down the left column for pop-out, down to 12, where it says 4K, and you can see that it's 12, go across 4K, which is a left-handed outcome on a pop-out if you roll a 12. So 4K, you say to yourself, okay, well, what does that mean? Well, let's look. We need to consult the fielding grid. And if we're playing this version, the advanced version, the individual fielding version on baseball classics, what we do is we look at the advanced grid. So uh, the way that works is you go up four, and I'll use a pen here uh, to indicate where a four would be. Let's see if I can get a better pointer here. Again, sorry that the camera is shaking. Here's four. And then we look down and we go to K. 
So 4K. I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit and you can see that 4K is in the first baseman's fielding zone, okay? So it's a fielding check for the first baseman. So, okay, so we come back here and we look for the color. The color under 4K is white, okay? So 4K being white means that if the fielder's defense was white, then that would be uh, an error that he committed. Well, there are no white errors. There are no white rated defenders. So all of the white areas that you see here are outs. Now, if, say, I had rolled a six on Reggie Jackson's pop-up, and three F was what the six takes us to because Reggie's a left-handed batter, if the fielder was rated red, that would have been an error. If I roll a five, nine C, and the fielder's rated green, that's an error. If I roll a three, and the fielder in the zone for 16Q was blue, that's an error. Where do you find these defensive ratings for the individual fielders? Well, we come back to Reggie's card, and we see that in the upper right corner that each defender is rated for their position, and Reggie's red. So you can see that if we go back to these cards, again, because the the way that the dice probabilities work, your higher chances are in the middle. Uh, if you are a red defender, you make more errors. If you are a yellow defender or a blue defender, you make the least amount of errors. I'm sorry, if you are a yellow defender or a green defender, you make the least amount of errors. All right, so that's defense. But there's another way you can do defense. And it's a little bit more basic. Uh, and the way that it works means that I need to take you to a chart that I put together to help me play the game. And it looks like this. What I did was I laminated my baseball classics charts um, so that I can use them very easily without flipping pages. So I laminated two of them together and they look like what you see in front of you. On the left are all your strategy charts that I showed you at the first part of this video. And on the right is um, a couple of other charts, injury charts and some ways that uh, ratings are handled, uh, special plays and so on. But on the top half of the right page that you see in front of you, in the top half of the right page is team defense. And if you're going to do team defense, which sometimes I do use, this is intermediate defense, what happens is you have to add up the defensive points for the different players that you have on the field at that time. Those points are translated to green, yellow, blue, or red outcomes. And so after each play, hit or error, just like on the individual defensive ratings that I just showed you, after each play, except for a walk or a strikeout or a home run, you roll to see to make an error check. So for each baseball classics outcome, there are two roles. One is to do the card outcome, and then second, for almost all outcomes, except for the walk, the strikeout, or the home run, you need to do an error check. This is team defense. So if you wanna see if the individual player or an individual that the ball was hit to made an error, you do the, your second roll and you look at the chart to the left. If the color comes up, so for the green column, if your team defense is excellent and you roll a three or an 18, you see green boxes then you know an error happened. But what you don't know is how many errors, how many bases are advanced on that error. 
So then you roll a second time to see how many air, how many bases the runner moves, runner or runners move, plural, and then you check that. Okay, so you can have hits and errors on the same play in baseball classics. One is for individual fielding, the second is for team fielding. Hope that's clear. All right, with that, we're gonna call this a video. We're gonna call it a wrap. One more look at the laminated sheet that I set up so that you can get a sense of what I did to make my game play easier on Baseball Classics. It'll help you if you use the standard game or the premium game. Okay. All right, thank you for watching. Please click like and subscribe and stay tuned for more Baseball Classics as I demonstrate gameplay in the next video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. So long, everybody.